Hey everybody, welcome back. So we pretty regularly get questions. What's the difference between a python and a boa? So I thought that would be a pretty good topic to touch on today. Really quick video, just going to scratch the surface of it. And I've got my friend Apollo, my albino Burmese python to help me today on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. <sighs> so I'm going to be panting a little bit from rustling around with this guy right here. <laughs> I think I finally got him calmed down enough to hang out while we talk. So today should be a pretty quick video. A lot of it is we're testing out the new recording equipment. Hopefully you guys can see the difference. Uh, so far I've been able to see the difference in a lot of the stuff that I've been practicing with. So as we get better with it, it should get a little bit cleaner, a little bit better, uh, which is our goal. Always working to improve the channel. And of course, as always, if you guys want to keep up with the improvements, go down, click the subscribe button, get notified for when we got new stuff coming out. When I accidentally bumped a snake in the nose. I'm glad you're not head shy. <laughs> but anyway, just a really quick video today. Um, just scratching the surface of the difference between boas and pythons. Again, this is a python right here. It's a Burmese python. A lot of you guys may uh, be familiar with these as the invasive species down in the Everglades. They get a whole lot of press. But I'll tell you what, they do make amazing pets if you're into large constrictors. Uh, I'm a retic guy. I love my retics. We'll never, never ever get rid of my retics. That being said, it is so much easier working with the berms because the retics are, have just got so much energy. Um, if I would have had one of my retics up here right now, I would already be panting from chasing him around trying to, you know, restrain him. Uh, the berm here doesn't do too bad. He's pretty laid back. Even with his size, I mean, he's I mean, he's not big for a berm. He's only like 12 feet long, uh, but he is a male, so males will typically get smaller. Uh, but I really love this guy. He does great. He was a really awesome animal at the museum, interacting with all the kids and all that stuff. So he's my puppy dog. But when we talk about the difference between boas and pythons, you're going to hear a couple terms. Um, one of them is you'll hear them referred to as either new world or old world snakes. And where that comes from is, you know, you guys may have heard this, you know, when you're studying Columbus and stuff like that. Um, you know, their trip to the New World. Well, the Old World is typically Europe, Asia, that side of the, that side of the globe. New World's considered like South and Central America. So that's where that comes from. And pythons, like this Burmese right here, you know, it's the Burmese, the reticulated pythons. All pythons are generally old world snakes. So you're going to find them in that part of the world primarily. Just like with everything, there's exceptions to the rule. But um, they're pretty few and far between. Pretty much if you're walking around out in Indonesia and you see a big constrictor, it's going to be a python of some sort. So uh, boas, alternatively, are of course old world snakes. And you'll find them in Central and South America predominantly. So one thing about boas and pythons is there's a whole lot of diversity. Uh, you know, you'll see little tiny sand boas all the way up to the giant anacondas. And, you know, same thing with pythons. You'll see the huge reticulated pythons all the way down to these little green tree pythons and stuff like that. And it can be difficult for a novice to tell the difference between boas and pythons a lot of times too. Um, you know, you take somebody that doesn't, have a lot of experience with snakes they'd have a hard time telling the difference between a green tree python and an emerald tree boa for instance um, they get confused pretty frequently i've actually got a green tree python here back there but i do got to say i do want to get some emerald tree boas at some point because they're just they are really phenomenal uh, they scare a lot of people it's the uh, arboreal nature of these snakes they can be really reactive and stuff like that uh, so a lot of people tend to get nervous around the arboreal snakes. Same thing as the green tree pythons, the um, uh, carpet pythons and such. Uh, all of these that spend a lot of time in the trees tend to be a little bit more reactive. And you got to kind of pay attention to their behavior a lot more. 
Now, they've got a couple different claims to fame. The reticulated python, of course an old world snake, is the longest snake species in the world. And the anaconda, which is a new world snake, is the heaviest species in the world. So, and it runs all the way from your giant green anacondas all the way down to your little tiny sand boas and dozens if not hundreds of species in between. The biggest difference is that pythons are oviparous, meaning that they lay eggs. Boas are viviparous, meaning that they give live birth. And we also get the question, um, you know, which snakes are better to get as pets? Which have got the best temperaments? Now, that question, you'll hear opinions about different snakes having different types of personalities and so forth. But I tend to tell people that it's not necessarily the species so much as it is the handler. Um, you know, you can, you can take a snake like a Burmese python, like this guy right here. Uh, these guys are known for being real docile, real easy to keep as pets, but in the, in the wrong hands with somebody that doesn't know how to treat them, doesn't know how to read them, doesn't know how to respect them and handle them. You know, this could be a holy terror. Uh, because it'd be afraid of the person and every time the person had come up to approach it, you know, it'd try and defend itself, which um, would give it a really bad demeanor. You know, alternatively, you take something like a, like a yellow anaconda that might have a bad attitude uh, naturally and you get a good handler that knows how to work it and can build that relationship with it, it can be a pretty fine animal to work with. So, um, you know, I think more... When you're talking about the differences between like boas and pythons, especially with uh, when you're considering which one to get as a pet, you really want to consider how big of an animal you want to end up getting, how big of an animal you want to end up working with. Um, there's all kinds of species outside of retics and anacondas and you know red-tailed boas that get a little bit smaller. Um, so I think that's probably more of a priority for people to consider than, uh, you know, you may really love retics, and you may really want one, and they may be really easy to work with, but you can't handle an 18-foot snake on your own. You know, you live for whatever reason. You live by yourself, stuff like that. Uh, so you may want to go down a little bit. You know, a little boa and pirator, those are always really nice to keep. Um, mine has got a great personality. He's really social, really easy to work with. But um, a lot of people will misconstrue their behavior real easily because Boas, they would like to sit with their necks in that S'd up position. Uh, it's, a, it's like a resting position for them. And everybody always associates that with getting ready to strike. You know, like with my retakes, when you see their neck S'd up like that, uh, you start paying close attention. With my boa, when you see him like that, that's just his uh, resting snake face, so to speak. So I've got a video list that I want to be working on. Um, after I get this one out today, I'm going to kind of go through that again and see which one I want to start putting together. It'll be uh, really cool because we've got better equipment to work with now, start getting some B-roll lined up. and uh, So we've got a lot of work ahead of us yet. Uh, over this winter, uh, I hope to get a lot of improvements done on the channel, get ready for next year because as soon as springtime comes, of course, we're going to be you know, going right back at it, doing public education events and stuff like that. So. Never a dull moment. Again, get subscribed to the channel. Keep up with all the stuff that's going on. Hit the notification bell. And thank you again to our Patreon supporters. You guys rock. Uh, if you guys want to jump on and help that way, the Patreon link is always down in the description. And we're going to be doing our live stream again Saturday at 8 Central. If anything changes, I'll let you know. I typically put the link out for that on Friday. Where you go? <laughs> so I think I'm going to put him back and uh, we'll see you guys next time on Intrepid Exotics.